Okay, uh, we are live. Hello, uh, welcome to the Jenkins Governance Meeting. Today is uh, March 10th, um, and we will have a few topics in the agenda. So we will start from uh, recent news and announcements, then we will talk about the Jenkins Kubernetes Operators project, uh, discuss uh, the upcoming contributor summit, and uh, then we will uh, talk about formal things like uh, confirming uh, candidates for Jenkins Governance Board and officer positions after Mark Jackson stepped down. So these are main agenda items, and hopefully we will finish in time. Okay, uh, let's start from the LTS release. Um, so if it's officially out by now, uh, Mark, would you like to summarize it? It is. 2.277.1 2 has released major changes as announced previously as planned for pull requests that were more than a year in, in, in flight. Thanks very much to so many who contributed so much to this release. Uh, we'll do a webinar next week on it. We already have 230 people registered to attend the webinar. Awesome. Yeah, sorry, it's a Jenkins online meetup. I should use the correct terminology, shouldn't I? That's fine. Uh, yeah, we'll put uh, the links uh, to the agenda. Mm, so yes, yeah, speaking of that, uh, we still have uh, some uh, known regressions and plugins. Uh, yeah, there was a discussion in the mailing list yesterday. I'm trying to get. Okay. Do they use a VH? I have no idea, but here, there's the, there's the link to the. I've pasted the link into the into the agenda, Uli. Oh, like. Okay. So for me, it just doesn't work now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you. Okay, it works. Okay, so yeah, everyone is welcome to join uh, this webinar. And if someone wants to present in demo, demo features, uh, the agenda is flexible. So please join and uh, you'll be able uh, to talk about the changes. Okay, another important change is about Jenkins trademark. So we are almost ready to park this topic. Um, so as discussed at the previous meeting, uh, our trademark is all by LF Charities uh, Inc. So I have updated pull requests to the Jenkins governance documentation. Uh, as far as I can tell, there is no legal implications due to that. Um, and yeah, one of other follow-ups is that likely we will uh, remove sublicense agreement entirely because uh, there is no such entity for trademarks uh, the Linux Foundation holds, except uh, the Linux uh, trademark itself. Uh, but yeah, since you have uh, pre-approved trademarks, uh, trademark usage patterns, I think that we are totally fine. So I hope to merge uh, this pull request uh, maybe today. If, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you can get, uh, get it approved. Uh, so why it's in news? Because um, it uh, creates uh, some change. It leads to some changes for downstream users, including uh, vendors, adopters, and because uh, trademark attribution also needs to be eventually changed. So currently, you have to write that uh, Jenkins is a registered uh, trademark of software in public interest. Now it has to be changed to LF. Uh, um, uh, charities. So there is a pull request which updates guidelines, and after that, uh, there is no need to uh, an immediate change, uh, but uh, yeah, we expect uh, Jenkins users uh, who, who use trademark attributions to gradually switch to the new one. Okay, then. Yeah, Jenkins Contributor Summit recap. Uh, Mark, would you like to summarize it? Yeah, so we had we had a three-day mm -hmm. Contributor Summit. The three-day mm -hmm. Contributor Summit started with an opening two-hour session, concluded with a two-hour closing, and then had tracks in the middle across a period of about 48 hours. Uh, initial opening session had 25 attendees. Closing session had 21 or 22. So that's that's okay in the sense that it's as good or better than we did in Belgium a year ago when we were face to face, but it's certainly not as good as we could do with an online contributor summit. We were delighted to have people from all over the world uh, participating in the tracks. We had 
truly people from, let's see, Africa, India, uh, Brazil, the North America, Europe, all involved in the summit, really positive. A number of points of feedback that were sent as an email summary to the dev, dev list. Yeah, yes, feedback, but uh, the feedback about the summit is uh, positive. Uh, there was uh, there were also suggestions um, about what we could improve, mostly promoting to the event more. Um, and yeah, I think that this is something we could definitely do. I, I wish I planned ahead and went to more of this stuff. It was a little tight for me to schedule around things, but the ones yeah, I went to were great. Yeah, that's and, why and, we talk about the next summit now. Right. And, and there were complications hiding in that, right? Because uh, some of our attendees that could have attended from India just didn't because of the time that we put the starting, the opening session. It's, or our, our friends from China. You know, we have lots of people all over the world who are interested in these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's all that I had on it, Oleg. Okay. Okay, so the next item is uh, CDF contributor satisfaction uh, survey. Would you like to summarize it? Yeah, just a, um, so CDF, we, we're running surveys throughout the community. So our members, ambassadors and contributors being, being one key body. So we're asking uh, anyone who contributes to one of our projects or directly to our special interest groups to take this five, 10 minutes survey and to give us feedback. Um, from the perspective of your project or, or your interest area to know like how, how are we doing on communications, what, which services do you use and what would you like to see more or less of. So um, yeah, I think it's just for our planning uh, and also to know how well we're kind of meeting the requirements of, of the project communities. Any questions? I passed this survey, it takes something like five minutes. So if you have some time, it would be great to send me this feedback. And I'll drop, I'll, I'll send an email as well to the dev mailing list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank thanks. You. Thanks for surveying everybody, Tracy. Much appreciated. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so. yeah, in general as well, if this board has any feedback, um, always feel free to reach out to me directly or uh, to these meetings mm -hmm. when I can come along. Yeah. Are there any other news we are missing? Yeah, so the one uh, we will be discussing later that uh, Mark Jackson has stepped down uh, as a governance board member and Jenkins event officer um, due to personal reasons. So we will uh, be selecting interim um, board members and uh, event officer. Um, but yeah, it's rather a governance thing, so it doesn't the immediately in the ongoing projects. Okay, um, so let's go back to the agenda. Uh, we have proposal uh, about making Jenkins Openness Creator a sub-project within uh, the Jenkins uh, organization. So what it means, um, currently on the website, we have a number of uh, projects listed here. Um, this list is a bit dated. Uh, because we had an action item to actually archive Evergreen uh, project because it's no longer active. Um, and uh, for the rest, uh, there were ideas about merging uh, sub-projects, uh, uh, special interest groups, uh, maybe working groups or, or teams, because uh, it's hard to distinguish sub-project and seek at the moment, especially the, uh, since there is overlap, for example, for Google somewhere. Of course. So, um, uh, and the proposal is to add uh, Jenkins Kubernetes operator to this list. Um, it basically just um, highlights that uh, this uh, part of the Jenkins project has uh, independent uh, governance to some extent, independent roadmap, and uh, also it allows uh, to basically promote it uh, uh, using various channels. For example, Jenkins X was a Jenkins sub project for a while. Just so, one question, Oleg, yeah. um, just on the details. I, I know the, I've seen the special interest groups um, mm -hmm. outlined process. Is there a reference document for sub projects and kind um, of how that's managed? 
No, some projects are quite informal. They were created before we had a Jenkins enhancement proposal process. Okay. So basically, uh, all these uh, items uh, have been created uh, on a more or less random basis. So when uh, the project leads, uh, we're interested in registering it as a sub project. Yeah. That's uh, the only criteria. And formally approval from the Jenkins governance meeting is enough to add it to the list. Okay. It's good to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ideally, we should have some uh, formalities around that. But I think that uh, do we need a sub project at all, or whether it's fine to just have a working group? So it's something we can figure out later. Yeah, mm -hmm. now I, I can see there's kind of distinct uses for for each uh, thing, but uh, appreciate it's, it's not probably not high priority to formalize at this stage. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I guess yeah. All, Agenda is to actually vote and to agree on this topic. So I'm just checking up the vote asynchronously. So, Vartek, uh, would you like uh, to uh, add additional details? Uh, yeah, this? of course. Okay. Um, so, mm -hmm. so first of all, thank you for adding this um, okay. as part of agenda today. Um, mm -hmm. And as, as mentioned, um, would be great to be aligned with overall Jenkins roadmap in terms of Kubernetes support. Um, mm -hmm. And long term, we also would like to make this project more open for the wider community, especially we plan to join uh, CD Foundation as well. And we would mm -hmm. love to make uh, this project also part of uh, CD Foundation uh, project portfolio. Um, and this is kind of like think which makes um, everything more easier and convenient for us um, to, to make this part of CD, uh, CD foundation. Otherwise, as a virtual slab, we would have to um, establish kind of um, separate unit, involve legal department, um, a lot of um, unnecessary work involved, I believe. Uh, hopefully Tracy can elaborate, can elaborate more on that because we, we were already discussing this part, I believe. Uh, but the, at the end of the day, uh, we would like to be aligned we, with the community, we would like to be part of it, especially now we finally have a um, dedicated team at peer to slab working exclusively on Jackness Operator. Um, so it would be great to, you know, uh, have more engineering effort, um, establish governance, um, governance model, contribution model, um, and inherit um, a little bit from like CD foundation ways of working and be part of this group. Okay. So I'm, I'm also happy to answer any questions about the project itself, about like any concerns you have. Mm -hmm. I think that that makes sense. I think if the we can have Jenkins operator officially recognized as a sub project under Jenkins, um, that means we will kind of treat it uh, to a certain extent as part of Jenkins, certainly for, you know, any activities we do with the project. So whether it's the surveys or featuring in the newsletter or reaching out to you for um, being yeah. part of CDCon or, or running uh, boffs and, and things like that. I, I think it's a it's a good path to to help kind of talk about it through through our specific channels. So is the plan to make it a sub project of Jenkins now and then later be a full CDF project later? Um, I think there's a path for that similar to to Jenkins X. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would say we should cross that bridge when it comes to it. So if we're building up contributors and because we want to kind of get more into the cloud native space potentially we could because it, it doesn't make much sense to be both a sub project of jenkins and cdf at the no. same time no. yes okay agree so long term just... it would be one or the other it will never be both yes okay gotcha uh, also it's worth mentioning that it's been a while since the project was um like it's still hosted under jenkins ci uh, github organization for almost like more than two years, I believe. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of, you know, um, informal uh, thing to, to make this, this work, basically. Yeah. And certainly from my perspective, I'm seeing a lot of interest um, in the whole operator space and certainly with Jenkins Operator. Uh, CDF, we're planning to do many more activities with the CNCF. Um, so I think like via the operator, that's one way we can try to uh, also encourage folks to discover it through through their channels. Um, right. And I don't know, is the Jenkins operator have its own kind of yeah, bit on the roadmap? I think it'd be nice for it um, to... It has one uh, data entity. So basically the job which was created two years ago when the project was uh, hosted. After that, uh, there were some discussions about uh, getting this roadmap reflected, uh, but the, yeah, it hasn't happened uh, due to uh, discussions about how to um, address road, uh, different roadmaps because here yeah, we have Virtuslav, we have Red Hat, uh, which currently develops its own uh, Jenkins operator. So in August yeah. and later the discussions how it could be merged, et cetera. But yeah, now they are basically two separate uh, projects. Uh, whether yeah. it ends I up don't as... know. From the governing board side, is there like, I could see how it would be so much stronger for Jenkins to focus on one operator and encourage all parties to work together towards that yeah. um, for, for the kind of the overall future. So. Um, I don't That's know if there's been we, any discussions. There were discussions. Unfortunately, we were not successful at that point. Uh, maybe we will try again uh, later. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, it's not a blocker for this particular project. And yeah. of course, yeah, since we have roadmap here, of course, uh, putting the main items on the main Jenkins roadmap as well as promoting it uh, through Jenkins social media events, essentially everything is totally valid and uh, let's do that. Good. So uh, from the side of the governance board, six, et cetera, we can support that and uh, provide uh, some resources uh, and, uh, from the administration standpoint. But, yeah. I personally don't see any blockers which would prevent us from hosting it as a sub project. Because again, it's mm-hmm. just a de facto uh, acknowledges the current state. Yeah, and, and in addition to that, I think there's also um, um, the trademark um, thing mm-hmm. needed to, to resolve because. Um, as, as the project itself is part of Jackie CI organization, mm-hmm. uh, we have like, we, we made this informal assumption about using Jenkins operator project name, right? And mm-hmm. as the, the Jenkins trademark will be transferred under um, Linux foundation, it makes like it, it easier and we can reuse the same uh, trademark approach as mm-hmm. part of CD Con, uh, sorry, CD Foundation project portfolio, will have the same trademark. So, yeah. so we are happy also to transfer this. Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just some, one thing to, to mention that um, similar to how Kubernetes has set up a, a compliance program to allow folks to use like Google mm-hmm. Kubernetes engine or produce a compliant one if, if there's something that's in, of interest to, to say, okay, we'd like to have a similar style compliance program so people can uh, you know, produce branded versions of whatever Jenkins or Jenkins operator, um, then that's something I, I can coordinate with the, the LF legal folks and the community. Yep. We can definitely do that. Uh, there is likely to be some demand uh, because yeah, there are historical product names uh, which are more convenient uh, than uh, the new trademark uh, naming policy uh, to some extent. So perfect. We can, uh, yeah, options. I think there's it's fairly straightforward from our side. The side that is complicated is just agreeing with the community what the technical specification is to say something is compliant. So we want to be in a position that people trust the brand and know that it means something specific. Um, so coming up with whatever tests or measures, um, that, that, that's kind of the challenging part that uh, I'd look to the, the board here to, to work with to help figure that out. 
Yeah. yeah, I think Kubernetes makes uh, it even easier because mm -hmm. the API standard is quite, you know, it's declarative, so we can rely on um, manifest schema as a compliance mm -hmm. policy, and it shouldn't be that hard at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good to you. you could uh, do pretty much the same for Jenkins if needed, uh, because mm -hmm. yeah, there will uh, multiple experiments and prototypes which you will actually convert in Jenkins to a set of services, introducing features like high availability, multi-tenancy, while retaining uh, uh, REST APIs um, and other user management endpoints. So we can just do something along these lines. I suggest we, we just set up a SIG um, that would be in charge of managing that and go from there. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, so the main question is uh, whether there is a demand to do that, uh, because if there is a demand, we can uh, do that. If not, uh, yeah, probably it's too early. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah, I think we should formally vote, uh, unless, because yeah, no feedback. Uh, is anyone against or does anyone ha have any concerns about uh, having it as a sub project? Good. Plus okay. one. Yeah, then just Plus accept one. it. Yeah, that's uh, the easy part. But uh, you will also need to update uh, the website. Uh, <laughs> So, oh, like I just saw the uh, saw the Google the Kubernetes Jenkins on Kubernetes documentation as a sub project there. I think it's safe to remove that now. So I'm going to be doing that anyway. You want me to touch this, or would you prefer that this come from Bartek or someone else? You mean uh, so that that menu there has oh, it's not a menu it's also a page here it's a summary here ah, so my recommendation okay. would be uh, for Bartek, uh, to do that because got it okay it's not a big deal uh, but uh, is yeah. it just a um, project overview or um, is it complete documentation i mean technical documentation which needs to be hosted under this website? No, it doesn't have. So basically we have summary page with pointers okay, and, and, uh, items and that's it. And also community contacts, but yeah, it's just metadata. Mm -hmm. so I don't mind adding a new pull request. Yeah. It's just place. a skidoc page with some metadata. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, if you could uh, do that, uh, I think it will be the most yes. effective way. And uh, yeah, same for the Jenkins roadmap. If you have some uh, major items, uh, it would be great if you could submit it there so we can uh, represent it. Yes, we'll do that. Okay. And, and I guess... congratulations. I was going to say, now that it's an official part of Jenkins, if there's a like a 1.0 release, uh, keep us posted and uh, like CD Foundation helps with press releases and something like that, uh, mm -hmm. I think would be of interest to, to the community. So worth making an announcement around. Yeah, we can even announce so that it becomes an official sub project if you want. Uh, yeah, just writing a short blog post, why not? Yeah. So if someone else wants to do that, I think that we can just do it. It's not like we post. Or many blog posts uh, these days. So. <laughs> wait, wait for GSOC. <laughs> yeah, wait for GSOC. Uh, no. uh, currently, we have a uh, trend there. So last year, we uh, submitted 17 uh, GSOC blog posts in total, which was good. Okay. So, anything else regarding this topic? Okay, then uh, next item, probably a quick one, uh, next contributor summit. So my suggestion is to actually start planning one because uh, yeah, this one was uh, our first experiment with a remote contributor summit. Uh, we can uh, learn a lot from that. And also yeah, we still have a lot of uh, 
opportunities uh, to engage with the community because we didn't uh, cover all the topics. Um, we, there are also um, some key discussions which could happen, for example, in, uh, releasing the Jenkins 3, um, and things like that. So having um, a dedicated contributor summit, I think uh, it would be uh, nice. And uh, if we do it in the June timeframe, we will have uh, plenty of time to, pre uh, to prepare and uh, uh, to have everything in place. So that's why I'm thinking that having it around uh, CDCon uh, timeframe uh, would be the ideal option. So again, we can have a separate event. Indeed. Yeah, I had a quick chat with Alyssa. Sorry, I do have to drop off, but just very quickly, um, mm -hmm. I think I'd sent one proposal where if we had wanted to have it in like the, the CDCon platform and do it as a full day zero event. Um, that's a pretty costly event because we do like using hop in and having like LF events team would insist on kind of, you know, supervising it um, and we do marketing and things like that. Um, a, a lighter kind of mm -hmm. suggestion would be that if you had one on the Friday after CDCon uh, and that's something we put on the schedule and let people know, but then the Jenkins community just runs it and you run it in your own platform uh, mm -hmm. and you do it in Zoom. And I, I, I think that that would kind of work out better um, yep. just as a kind of lighter, keep it managed by Jenkins community. Uh, so Tracy, is the cost for doing it on, um, on CD, the CDCon platform that would cost about, is it still 20K? More than that, yeah. Oh, okay. Is is the cost mostly like a time thing for moderators and stuff, or is it actually like platform costs? There's a bit in platform costs. I've got to say the the virtual event platforms are not cheap, um, but it's also uh, like for every room we'd have it's we'd have a, a full staff member plus someone on hand for speaker support. Uh, plus before before the event kind of managing speakers. So it mostly does end up being people costs, um, but there's no, like for, for all the Linux Foundation events, they are fully moderated. So there's no option to kind of delegate that to the community as such. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so with this course, uh, most likely we should uh, do the second option. Or find a sponsor for the first. Or find a sponsor. This is the other option, yeah, or a, a couple of sponsors. Um, we are doing like before the main city con, the day zero event, which is the Tuesday, we, we are now likely to be doing a Spinnaker contributor day, so workshops and uh, SIGs and a GitOps day. Um, so probably on organizational effort, we're, we're probably maxed out uh, in terms of being able to take on another day zero event just because CDF mm -hmm. is a, a small team. But again, if there's something Jenkins wants to do that mm -hmm. doesn't conflict or we can like have everyone come to CDCon, call them into the boss and tell them, hey, come join us at this um, contributor summit. I, I think that could work well. And even if it's not that week, it could be the following week, but we, you could advertise it he heavily and, and kind of spin off it. Agreed. So I'm going to drop off, but I think Jackie's going mm -hmm. to come along to the advocacy meeting tomorrow. So if you decide anything, uh, you can start having the conversation with her. Yep. So let's uh, talk more about this topic tomorrow then. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Tracy. Sorry, I can't stay for everything. This is super interesting, but yeah, got to drop. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. And actually, we have uh, two topics left. Um, are there any other comments, questions about the computer summit? Um, maybe related topic about having user advisory board. Um, I still need to formulate uh, how it would happen, but I think that we should uh, run one. But yeah, we can discuss uh, how, uh, when, etc. once we have event officer and governance uh, board member in place because uh, they will need to be involved. So what does the user advisory board or thing mean to you? Uh, basically uh, reaching out uh, to a number of um, users, uh, most targeting big users um, and user companies 
uh, getting uh, them invited to special event where basically they have some slot uh, to share the experience. To so would you say this is demands. a position or would it be a separate board? I think so it, um, it won't be an entity in the organization. Well, we, uh, some uh, projects uh, create the user advisory boards as uh, formal entities. Yeah. But yeah, currently I'm rather thinking about event. Because okay. uh, yeah, having uh, additional entity will require multiple formal things. Like how do we select, elect uh, representatives uh, there? How we ensure that uh, basically other, peer, other users are still represented? And uh, yeah, just having it as an open event, I think it would be a good starting point and we can move yeah. from there. Sounds good. I just didn't know and since it was recorded, I figured it's a good time to ask. Uh, that's right. Okay. So let's go forward to uh, government board and officers. Again, yeah. uh, mark his steps down. Uh, basically, it's effective uh, starting from the last week. Um, and yeah, what it means that we have two elected uh, positions which are currently empty, and we have an interim uh, procedure defined in our government documentation. This procedure basically states that uh, the board uh, can appoint uh, an interim board member um, and uh, then approve it at the regular governance meeting. So what uh, the governance board decided is that uh, basically we nominate uh, Evelina uh, to become uh, a board member. Why? Because Evelina got uh, the most of the votes um, uh, in 2020 elections, um, right behind, uh, I'm sorry, right behind Gavin. And so, yeah, I think it would be fair to just uh, respect uh, these voting results. And hence uh, the request uh, for confirmation. And we have already contacted Evelina. Uh, she confirmed that uh, she would be willing to, uh, to take this role. And uh, Evelina actually was interested in representing the users on the board. So yeah, that's why I was referring to that in a user advisory. Okay. Yep, no so, objections. Okay. Any concerns, questions? Plus one. Plus oh, one for plus me. Plus one. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Plus one, I'm good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. So I think then uh, it's confirmed. One question is what would be the term? Because when we were reworking um, uh, the election process, uh, we actually didn't touch the interim process. Uh, and uh, the state, uh, the wording is exactly like it was before uh, to uh, fulfill uh, the role until the remain, uh, use, uh, yeah, the remainder of the term. So, for example, in the case of uh, uh, current uh, replacement, it would be one year and nine months. So basically almost the full term. Mm. Um, are we fine with that? Or do we want to revisit it and to basically target the next elections? I like fulfill the remainder of the term. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see no reason yeah. to deviate from what we've written. Yeah. And she had, makes sense, yeah. And she had, she had agreed to it as part of the, the earlier election process. So I think it's very reasonable so long as Evelina doesn't have strong objections. Mm. Agree. Mm -hmm. So it will be until uh, December 2023, 2022. That's so far in the future. There'd be flying cars and everything. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, every year I hear 20 something, it feels like it's going to be like back to the future, future, you know? 
Well, pen flies. So let's see. Anyway, thanks uh, to everyone. So uh, I will take an action item to actually announce uh, this change. And, and yeah, it will be a blog post uh, to be published uh, this week. So, yeah. And we have another topic basically about uh, Jenkins events officer. So for events officer, um, we contacted uh, members of advocacy and outreach seek and uh, contributors who were nominated uh, for this role um, in 2020. And basically we ended up uh, with only one person uh, stepping up to uh, take this role, it's me. Uh, so yeah, but um, in my case, I don't really consider myself uh, as candidate to take this role entirely until the end of the term, but rather to be an interim uh, officer and uh, to actually um, uh, look for con uh, contributors who would be interested uh, to take this role and actually uh, uh, work on onboarding and mentorship so that uh, they can uh, quickly uh, uh, take this role. Well, it's an ideal scenario. Yeah, my only concerns is that you do too much. So not that I would say you shouldn't take this role, but I'm very concerned that it'll be overwhelming. Well, uh, and then again, doing, we could just do nothing. I was doing a lot of uh, events uh, things uh, in the previous years. Yeah. And uh, even if I take this role, it doesn't change the current arrangement when advocacy and outreach seek basically does that. Yes, so like I said, I'm not actually concerned of, with you taking it. I'm just worried about Oh, like passing out in a dish somewhere to be too busy or forgetting to eat or doesn't see his kid ever, you know, um, those no kind of things. I learned my uh, lessons about uh, being cover uh, in yes. the recent months. Yes. Uh, this particular role now is uh, rather positive for me. So no objections, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plus one for me. I like that. So, Oleg, given that the events officer is elected annually, your, your vision is that you'll already recruit someone over the next relatively few months and begin having them act as a shadow or as pre preparation. Is that is that right? Yeah, that's uh, the current plan. Oh. Great. I, yeah. I love that. I think that's brilliant. Can you link to the responsibilities in this doc? Mm, yeah, sure. So... Yeah, we have the responsibilities here. Just here. First one. Yeah. Uh, it's still a team leaders here. So the yeah, event officer. Uh, but yeah, we refactored uh, the role definition again uh, before the 2020 elections. Uh, but yeah, it's the point of contact for events, participating on the office and the tree, communication events, etc. Uh, yeah. Conferences uh, and uh, yeah, other things. But uh, it's still relatively straightforward. And since we have advocacy and outreach seek, I think that we can load balance it easily. Yeah. And I'll try to reach out to some people I know that might be interested as well. It will be great. So if we can uh, get more people uh, from inside or from outside uh, the community, great opportunity for everyone because yeah, it's not only about uh, submitting uh, more code we really need to, to work on uh, outreach so that we can onboard more contributors and users i feel like it's a weird conflict of interest but i think reaching uh, seeing if anyone has bevy especially if cdf is using bevy for all their events might be interested in getting involved so i'm not mm -hmm. against a conflict of interest as long as it helps get things done yeah, let's see. Okay, so any objections? Plus one. And like I said, I'm I'm here to help you, Oleg, and um, future events officer. Plus one for me as well. One for me as well. Okay. So
So hopefully we will have uh, news about that. And yeah, I guess that's it about uh, Jenkins uh, both and officer updates. Um, yeah, my understanding that we will also need to work on plugin maintenance because Smart uh, was a maintainer of uh, several uh, important uh, plugins, including, for example, Prometheus plugin, uh, GitLab plugins. Uh, so, for example, for GitLab, now we have a uh, tables to diffs regression, and hopefully we'll be able to release it uh, today because it's time to park it. So oh, there is another contributor from Sima. I'm not sure um, what's the current state because uh, yeah, there is no release permission. I'm not sure from where the merge permission came. I will uh, trace it down and then yeah, handle that. But yeah, if somebody is interested in Prometheus, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, I guess everyone. Didn't didn't wasn't the GitLab a plugin a, a summer code project as well at some point? Uh, that was a GitLab branch source uh, oh, plugin. Okay. 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 Uh, so GitLab branch source. Uh, yeah. Okay. See that it's uh, somewhat active. So currently. Yeah, I just thought it would be another source of trying to find a maintainer, but I go pick the wrong one. So. So GitLab branch source was uh, originally mentored by multiple people. Uh, so yeah, we had some churn there, uh, but uh, still uh, this plugin is active. Okay. Any other comments? And yeah, uh, last topic uh, which we had uh, is about uh, using uh, GitHub Jenkins uh, account. So just quick history dive, uh, there is an individual user account uh, using github.com uh, Jenkins. This account is no longer active. There was some activity in the very beginning. Uh, several years ago, I already made an attempt to reach out uh, to the contributor using the Git metadata. Uh, and to ask about transferring account, I got no response. And uh, why I'm bringing up this topic is because um, yeah, one of the contributors created an issue, uh, basically suggesting to move this account. I invited uh, this contributor to join the call. It didn't happen, but uh, at least uh, we can have a quick discussion to agree whether we want to invest time in that. Because yeah, when we released Jenkins 2.0, we agreed that we don't want uh, Jenkins to be Jenkins CI because it's Jenkins is generic automation server, but uh, our Twitter handle and our um, GitHub is still Jenkins CI. So I think we should try to claim it if we can, but I'm not sure about renaming. I'm a little concerned about how much things will break if we rename things. Yeah, that's a good question. So in theory, GitHub uh, adds redirects, but in practice, uh, there might be still breakages here and there. Well, we, like so we have all the plugin documentation that will read through it with API calls that may not handle redirects. And they're fixable. I just don't know if it's worth the effort. Yeah, we also have a lot of tools here and there. And I'm not really looking forward to, to do the renaming, uh, especially since uh, the only way to claim this account is uh, to bring up a trademark infringement concern uh, to GitHub support. And then the, yeah, it has obvious uh, complications. So firstly, uh, Jenkins is a common surname, for example. And yeah, even if Jenkins is a trademark, I'm not sure that we have enough uh, justification to go to and to purchase any account which has Jenkins there. I mean, I the so. account is dead. I mean, there's no activity for like four, four years. Yeah. I don't think there's any any benefit to putting the effort in unless there's a, yeah. unless there's concerns about us not 
uh, enforcing a trademark, I don't think there's any point in pushing this. We it's Jenkins CI is is like documented everywhere is the repo to go to. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, I also uh, didn't see much need to talk on that. Um, we could put in a request to Jenkins support said and ask if they would be willing to do a redirect from Jenkins to Jenkins CI. But I don't even think that's worth it, honestly. I am intrigued by Gavin's suggestion of redirecting from Jenkins to Jenkins CI. That that wouldn't fundamentally resolve the question from the Jira ticket from the the issue, but mm -hmm. it does remove one more point of confusion. If you go to if you were to go to Jenkins in that case, you would be directed to the correct GitHub org J, Jenkins yeah. CI. But to stop redirect, we firstly need to take it over. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So does anyone feel strongly about uh, doing that, that we should do that? No, I do not think it's worth our time. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, uh, just changing the, uh, the branch uh, hierarchy is quite difficult in GitHub. So you need to make several emails to support and, and this is uh, a, a, like a a bigger thing, so I don't think it's really worth. Yeah, well, uh, there are glitches in there. So, for example, if you go to Jenkins CI, mm -hmm. you can see that a featured project uh, doesn't include uh, Jenkins at the moment, because at some point uh, it was included, so then uh, something happened, and currently you cannot really pin this repository anymore due to unknown reasons. So I submitted two tickets to support it and handle yet. So yeah, no Jenkins here. Yeah, I'm just thinking about even like the rename, renaming CI to Jenkins is just like all the infra, infra pipelines are gonna break, you know, probably most of the tooling it's so, and I don't think it's worth going to the trademark dispute just to get a redirect for something that doesn't affect anyone right now or does affect very many. Mm. Now, Twitter, Maybe. on the other hand, I could see that going, fighting that one. That one would, I would be much more, like if we wanted to try to claim Jenkins by itself on Twitter, I would say that much more worth our time because that's marketing, that's you know user facing. I wouldn't want to fight this guy for it, that's fine. But I'm just saying that that to me has a lot more use of our time than the GitHub repo. Mm, might be. So I'm not sure whether we contacted Matt uh, before. I didn't, maybe Tyler did, uh, but yeah. I'm not sure that uh, uh, taking over Twitter handle is easy. No, but you know, mm -hmm. people are more likely to go type in twitter.com slash Jenkins or at Jenkins rather than go to GitHub, you know? And even if they do go to GitHub, they will be able to go to the right URL. They won't type it out by hand in a post somewhere linked to the wrong post. Like it just, it seems like the split of effort there, you know? Yeah, I agree. So for now, just keep it as this then. Yeah. We can assign it to the new events operator uh, infer, uh, member. That's their, they'll, they'll be their first first job, right? Not you, the new new one. Twitter handle? Or what? Either one. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, it's definitely something to be dedicated to advocacy and outreach. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I say, I say, put it, punt it, wait till we need it. Mm -hmm. Unless someone really wants to do it, then we can support them. Oh. Yeah, there are so many things uh, we can do that make it 
real difference. Yeah. Uh, for example, writing blog posts, actually from working and gaining more on reports because our current uh, Twitter, LinkedIn activity is uh, below what we had uh, last year. Uh, yeah, I guess it doesn't really help with now this address in my uh, cache. In, uh, in Chrome and Fire, you can hit the delete key while it auto yeah. please, and it goes away, it's gone. Yeah, I will do that later. Uh, but yeah, uh, we need uh, to work a bit on uh, promoting stuff because uh, there is still a lot of uh, posts happening around Jenkins. Again, with different hashtags, with different mentions, but yeah, things are still there. So, best plugins to use in 2021. What are the best ones? I bet it's Get. from Labeler. You know that. I'm gonna say Git and warnings ng. Mostly because I've seen the search results on the. Oh, interesting. That would have not been my list of plug best plugins. Uh, well, this list is opinionated because it's environment specific, uh, yeah. well, Ocean, maybe an integration plugin, Jira plugin, in backup, this usage. Okay. Yeah, anyways, I, I think we can call the meeting now. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I think about your list uh, about the recommended plugins. Bonus yeah, we, we should do that. Each, each board member should make a blog post that says their recommendation, recommended list of plugins. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, so thanks, everyone. Um, next meeting, I guess, as usual, 24th of March, right? Uh, beware about time zone changes. Uh, our meeting is in UTC, I believe. Is it still configured for the UTC? So that will be... Yes, our meeting is UTC. Our time is defined UTC. Okay. Is that one hour later? Uh, I don't know. It depends on which part of the world you're in and whether or not they meddle with clocks. I know, but let's say that the time zone changes. I think it goes further away from UTC. Yeah. I don't know. I'll figure it out. The... So... Oops. Uh, but yeah. So. We assume that the meeting can be UTC and the, if something yes. is wrong, we will fix it. Correct. Yeah, it was, I intended to put it in UTC if I was editing it and we've regularly talked about it as UTC so that we don't have to yep. meddle with clocks. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's 1, 1 p.m. for me for the next one. So it's definitely UTC. Right, then yeah, it will be a bit late uh, for Europe. But, uh, let's see. Maybe we could adjust. I'd, I'd be happy if I stayed at the same time, but I'm good either way. Mm -hmm. Will you, what's your preference? I think it's for me it's still okay because I'm working in the night when my children are sleeping. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's, okay. let's, let's leave it the way it is as standing. Mm -hmm. And then and I'm going to pronounce her name wrong, but when Alina, Alina, joins us next time, mm -hmm. then we can have a discussion. Yep, agreed. Okay, then thanks everyone. And uh, yeah, we'll post the recording. So. Thanks, Oleg. Thank bye you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.